Hi everyone, I'm Niklas and I'm going to talk about how to compute the bottleneck distance for two persistence diagrams. So let's jump right in. Recall the definition of the bottleneck distance of two persistence diagrams X and Y. It is the informal cost of a matching of those two diagrams where the cost of a matching is the length of the or the distance between the largest distance between two paired points in the matching. Note that points are allowed to be matched to the diagonal here. So what I'm going to explain is uh, how to formulate this into a combinatorial optimization problem and how to tackle it algorithmically. And we'll finish with a uh, runtime analysis. So I've generated two persistence diagrams here, a blue one called X and an orange one called Y. And I've only uh, shown the off diagonal points here. So what we want to know is how far apart are those two diagrams in the bottleneck distance. Um, and we are going to build a bipartite graph and a special role is played by the diagonal projections of those off diagonal points. So uh, I've drawn them here as squares on the diagonal. So the uh, diagonal projection of this blue point is this orange point. Um, then we build a bipartite graph uh, with vertices U and V, where U is in this picture, all the blue markers and V are all the orange markers here. Uh, and then we have edges in this bipartite graph between first all the off diagonal points. We have edges between all the points on the diagonal. And for each off diagonal point, we have an edge to its diagonal projection. So uh, why don't we have any more edges between an off diagonal point and a diagonal point? That's simply because like, for example, look at this point here the distance to some point on the diagonal here is very, very large. And the shortest distance is exactly the distance to its diagonal projection. So uh, we're looking to minimize the length of uh, those distances. So this enough to look for matchings, which only include the possibility of points being matched to their diagonal projections. Um, now, a matching in graph theory is just a vertex disjoint subset of a graph and a matching is said to be perfect if all vertices are covered. So um, the edges that can contribute to a matching are drawn here. So let's again look at this blue point here, this off diagonal point from X is allowed to be matched to any of those off diagonal orange points and to its diagonal projection here. Then we define a cost function for our edges and the cost of an edge as drawn here is just its length in the infinity norm. Notice that I haven't drawn the edges between points on the diagonal because uh, they don't contribute any cost to our matching. So here the infinity distance, if any off diagonal points are involved and zero Otherwise, that is if only uh, the diagonal points are involved. 
So let us look at this abstract graph we have now constructed. This bipartite graph has these two subsets of nodes, U on the left, V on the right, consisting on the left of those three off diagonal points from this blue persistence diagram we've seen and the four diagonal projections from the four off diagonal points from the orange persistence diagram on the right hand side, vice versa. And we have edges between all off diagonal points, we have edges between all diagonal points, again, one edge each between each off diagonal point and its diagonal projection. So the key lemma for our algorithmic approach is that we can restrict to a certain subgraph. So for some threshold of epsilon greater than zero, we denote by G epsilon the bipartite graph, which has only those edges um, that are of length at most epsilon or otherwise G epsilon or like differently stated differently only though so we remove those edges which are longer than epsilon and then the bottleneck distance is the smallest epsilon for which g epsilon so this smaller subgraph with some edges removed has a perfect matching so matching covering all the vertices so what i'm going to show you now is how uh, the graph changes, so G epsilon, the subgraph G epsilon changes when epsilon changes. So if we look at some very small value of epsilon, only the edges between the diagonal points are there. And as we increase epsilon, we obtain more and more edges. And at some point, uh, there are enough edges for a perfect matching and if we further increase epsilon then at some point we recover the original graph g so let's look at how this uh, maximal matching in a subgraph looks so again we increase epsilon and for small values we only match points on the diagonal and then as we increase epsilon further, there are more and more points which get matched. And around 0 0.18, 0 0.19, um, finally all points are matched. So how can we use this for our computation? The idea is to use a binary search. So if we start, uh, so if we look at something like the middle here of this interval, we see, okay, we already have a perfect matching for this value of epsilon. So we continue looking on the left half interval here. So we still have a uh, perfect matching. So we again go to the left half interval, then we have no more perfect matching. So we go to the right half interval and so on. To make this more precise, we sort the edge weights and then we perform a binary search among the edge weights. So we take the midpoint of the interval, so the middle uh, edge weight, then this is our value for this threshold epsilon. We compute G epsilon. We compute a maximum matching here. And then we ask whether this matching is a perfect one. And if this is not perfect, then we uh, look at the right inter half interval for the next iteration. And if this is already a perfect matching, we look at the left half interval in the next 
iteration of the binary search. And running this code computes the bottleneck distance as uh, roughly 0.18, as we have already uh, suspected from our experiments. So let us finish with a runtime analysis. The runtime complexity uh, is denoted in terms of the input size n, which is the sum of the cardinalities of the two persistence diagrams. Then our bipartite graph has O of n squared edges. We use a sorting algorithm to sort the edge weights, which takes O of n squared log n. And then we perform the binary search, which has O of log n iterations. And in each of those iterations, we use the hopcroft karp algorithm, which is a standard algorithm from combinatorial optimization, which we only use as a black box here. So if you want to know more about it, uh, so hopcroft karp is, uh, hopcroft karp algorithm is the thing to Google. Um, but, we only need to know that it computes a maximum matching in O of n to the 2.5. So in conclusion, we have n to the 2.5 times log n as our runtime complexity. And it turns out that this can be improved by quite a lot. So the best currently known algorithm has complexity O of n to the 1.5 times log n. And that's uh, algorithm exploits the geometric nature of this problem. This like very efficient algorithm is uh, given in this paper by uh, Ifrat et Ali. -E. It is applied to the setting of TDA and persistence diagram by Michael Kerber and his co-authors. And like the standard reference for this algorithm in TDA is probably this uh, chapter 8.4 in Edelskroners and Hara's book, Computational Topology. So that's it. Thanks for watching and feel free to ask any questions. <laughs>